Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to add environment specific config to your Spark projects. So uh, at a high level what you're going to want in your Spark projects is some sort of config object that's going to maintain uh, your test configuration and your production configuration and based on the environment of your project uh, whether it's the test or production or staging or development environment, you want different values to be returned. So if we take a look at the Spark spec project, we can see a really good example where uh, I think it's in this logistic regression spec. Yep. So this is a great example of um, just a little bit of code where we want to return different values based on the environment. So here we're reading in um, some sort of lib SVM data, and this is for our training data set for a, a logistic regression model. So the argument of this load method, we're going to want it to be dynamic based on the environment. So if this code is run in the test environment, we want this to return kind of some sort of path in our local test suite in the resources file. And that way you can run this code in the test environment without making any web calls. If this code is run in the production environment, we're probably going to want this code to point to some sort of path in S3 with our production data, data set. And we could also imagine running this code in a staging environment uh, and so forth. So let's take a look at this uh, config object, how it's constructed, and then dig into how to play around and use, with that a little, use it a little bit. So we have uh, this test uh, configuration. We can see that that's a map with a string key and a string value. Uh, we have this production uh, environment, which is also a map with a string uh, key and a string value. Uh, we're using Scala to basically fetch the value of this project ENV. And by default, if the project env isn't set, that's an environment variable. If the environment variable isn't set, then it's the production environment is used by default. And then this is this get method, which is basically saying, okay, if the project environment is test, then return this test configuration. Otherwise, return the production configuration. And you can customize this for your own needs. You could obviously create some sort of uh, default configuration that would be shared and, and used by default um, and then there could be overrides. Um, so let's open up the SBT console and take a look at grabbing uh, maybe this libsvm uh, data path. So you can come here and type in SBT console. SBT console is a great way to play, or play around with your code. I've greatly magnified this to make it easy for you to read this on the YouTube screen, but it makes it offensively large on my screen. <laughs> All right, didn't mean to click that. Let's get this. All right, so let's import that config object. Um, so we can run config.get, uh, and it's called libsvmdata. Um, all right, so that's going to return the production path. So remember, uh, by default, we're using the production, uh, the project environment is set to production. So in order to start up the SBT console in the test environment, I'm going to need to specify the, the environment variable uh, when setting up the console. So let's take a look at this again. So if I set the project environment to test when setting up the SBT console. Um, basically, I'm going to run the same code and we're going to see that this in the test environment, this is going to return something different, uh, which is exactly what we want. Um, all right, so let's see if I can import that same config object. Let's run the same code as before. And now we can see that this is using uh, returning a path on my local file system, which is literally the path of this sample libsvm data.txt. Um, so before in, in the production environment, this was returning uh, an S3 path. And in my test environment, it's returning a path on my local machine, which is exactly what we want. So uh, 
I come here, if we take a look at this, um, in the test environment, I want this code to use this test resources sample libscm data.txt file. Um, so let's take a look at how we don't want to write this code, um, uh, which is commonly referred to as an anti-pattern. Uh, so here I'm calling this the evil anti-pattern. Um, so what we really don't want to do is have some branching logic where we're dealing with the, you know, explicitly calling out to the environment and, and having different code paths based on the environment. So we could do this, right? We could say if, if the environment is the test, then we're going to read from that, that local file. Otherwise, we're going to read from S3. Um, First off, we don't like that because it gets kind of long and messy. And the second reason we don't like that is it kind of um, makes our test suite a little weaker because we're using different code paths. So when we run the test suite, we're not actually going to test this production code path. Whereas with this, the, the test and production code paths are the same. So I, I highly recommend avoiding this uh, anti-pattern. Um, Okay, so the last thing I'd like to mention is how we're using vars instead of vals uh, to define the configuration maps and how that makes this configuration object uh, a bit more flexible because it allows for overrides. So let's go back to the config object. Um, so we can see in the test uh, map here we have, we're using a var. And vars can be reassigned to, to uh, another object of the same type. So we can uh, kind of override this something else value, for example. And then it'll return something new, our, our override. Let's take a look at that. So let's look at something else. So it's currently returning high. Um, and that's due to this config.test. Uh, config.test has this something else that points to high. Um, so we could kind of just override that. So we can do config.test equals config.test uh, plus plus map uh, something else. Uh, let's set it to high world. Um, so we can see now that this lib SVM data is still pointing to the same path as before, but now this something else is pointing to the high world string. So now when we do config.get something else, it's going to return high world. Um, so we'll just take a quick look at the blog post. I'm pretty sure that that covers it all. We did a basic use case. We showed how to add a config object to your project. Uh, we then kind of explained why we shouldn't use branching, branching logic that calls out to your environment in your code. Uh, we don't want to make our test uh, suite weak, uh, weaker. We demonstrated how to override your config, and now we're going to quickly look at how to set the project environment uh, variable by default for your test runs. Uh, great. So let's take a quick look at that. So in our build.svt file, uh, remember we were, we're using the production environment by default. So what we want to do, uh, we don't want to have to, every time we run our test suite, we don't want to have to run, we don't want to have to specify that it's project in env equals test, svt test. Uh, we don't want that, right? Because that would be really annoying. So our way of kind of getting around that is by making this setting in our build.svt file and we set this environment variable in the test environment we're setting the project environment uh, to test. So uh, I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.